Brad, obviously huge news. Can you talk about your reasoning why the boys won't be getting contracts? Uh, yeah, well, firstly, it's a, it's a heartbreaking um, decision and uh, I can assure everyone a decision that wasn't taken lightly. Um, it's, but there have been ongoing discussions uh, with the boys involved and um, the decision was, was taken to um, move the announcement forward because uh, we really feel that while we hope it's not, there's a possibility this weekend's game is our last game in Melbourne. And um, we were determined to give the players the opportunity for their friends, their family, their loved ones, but also um, the fans, the supporters, the members, uh, to see the boys play in Melbourne uh, for potentially what could be the last game in Melbourne. We genuinely hope it's not, uh, but it could be. So that necessitated the, the decision to bring it forward. How did they take the news? Oh, look, they're all very, very disappointed. Um, very disappointed um, and understandably so. They're all playing at a really high level. Uh, they're all, Boomer in particular has, has not just limped to, to 400 games, he's, he's burst through the 400 game barrier and, and is still playing footy at a really high level. So I completely understand that all four of the guys know that they're really integral members of our team right here, right now, and that they would all be capable of playing some really good footy in 2017. But the decision's been made with the best interests of the football club at heart. And if 2017 was going to be the last year on earth, uh, we know those four boys would make a contribution to us next year. But the future is longer than that, and we needed to make this decision in the best interest of North Melbourne's future. What did you, what did you tell Boomer, and, and how tough was that, and the toughest thing you've done? Uh, not just Boomer. I mean, Boomer, um, I spoke to all four boys yesterday, and um, it's easily the... the the hardest day of my coaching career, um, but it's I can understand, I can empathise the, the disappointment and um, the emotion that's involved in this. Um, but to the boys' credit, to a man, they all um, have talked about while they're really disappointed, they completely understand where the football club's coming from, and um, they dealt with things in an unbelievably professional um, and honourable manner. What sort of reaction do you expect to get from fans? Well, I understand a lot of fans will be disappointed, um, you know, particularly with, with some of the players. Um, but I'm charged with the responsibility of, of um, putting this football club in a really strong position over the long term. Um, we know that, and I acknowledge that when people say that Boomer in particular and the other three boys could make significant contributions in 2017, I agree with that. But this, this football club is going to go on longer than, than 2017. And, um, to deny young players the opportunity to play uh, is not in the best interest of our team. And all four of the boys are real competitors, but I'm also a competitor. And if those boys are on our list next year, I'm going to play them because we want to win each week and we set up the team to win. Um, and so while extremely uh, difficult in the decision-making process, we strongly feel that it's the right one in the so best so interest of the world. So you're saying then that this is the first indication, I guess, of all this regeneration? Well, the, the reality is that, that even the most optimistic person would think that the four boys, whilst capable of playing next year, um, would probably finish next year. So um, it would mean that, that we've denied opportunity for young players for another year. Um, it would mean that um, there's a whole raft of things that go into to building a list and sustaining a list. Um, but we'll continue to look at our options around trading, um, around free agency, um, around you know, trying to build the best football team we can. Is um, it but we cannot continue uh, to, to have these guys on the list and, and because, you know, I, I, I'm not ashamed to say I love these guys and I love them because of what they've given to this football club and if they're there, I'll play them. And, and that would not be in the best interest of our club in the long term. Is this a statement that you don't believe that you'll be able to make the grand final or if you'll go very far in the finals? Is this what you're saying today? Because you said... I don't, know, I don't know... Sorry, I've got to stop you there. I don't know how you can interpret that in any way, shape or form. All four boys play an integral part in our team right here, right now. And they'll play an integral part of our season uh, for as long as that may go. So all four of the boys have just spoken to their players um, no more than, than half an hour ago about how important it is we're really professional and that we're launching for an assault on the finals this year. This yeah, is this about the future, 217 and beyond. the boys, do you think, the timing of this? I've, I get that feel, speaking to the four boys in particular, um, because they're, they're determined um, to get every last ounce of energy out for this football club um, over the next, hopefully, five weeks. And 
they've implored their teammates to do the same. Bruno has spoken this year about how he still trains as hard as ever, he's as strong and fast as ever. Did it come as a shock to him, do you think? Not a shock because we've had regular ongoing discussion. Um, and back in 2009, Boomer was uh, 31 and uh, this team was really young, really inexperienced and um, we needed Boomer to play on. You know, we, if Boomer had said, I think I should retire, I would have talked him out of it because we really needed him to, to build this team. We fast forward seven years and he's played another seven years, made an unbelievable contribution, but now he's 38 and our football team by, by age and experience is very mature. So the football club and the football team is in a very different position. And Boomer will tell you himself, it's not about the individual. It's just not. Um, it wasn't about the individual when he was 31 in 2009, and it's not now in 2016. So it's about where the club's positioned right now and for the medium to long term was future. Bo was Boomer the hardest call to make, Brad, out of the, out of the four? No, they were all, they were all extremely hard. Um, Drew's almost, you know, Drew's been the, when North Melbourne's in trouble, Drew Petrie goes to the spot where we're struggling, whether that's forward, back, midfield. Um, I honestly don't believe we would have played him successive uh, preliminary finals if Nick Dalsano hadn't come to our club. Michael Frito's, you know, been the, the rock and the ultimate club man and everything that we, we admire and love about North Melbourne. So, um, they're all hard. When, trust assess me. when assessing the decision, was it a case of you'd rather play a few games short than a few games too many? I think there's a general philosophy around um, when you retire, you either retire six months too early or six months too late. Um, but let me stress this, this again is not solely about performance. In essence, the, the, the news would have been really hard to take, but the decision would have been a lot easier had they been all playing poorly. They're not playing poorly. This is, this is a decision um, taken in the best interest of the football club's future, not the individuals involved. Did they try and talk you around? No, they were, they were, and, and again, this is not a bombshell. This is, there's been ongoing discussion over a long period of time, but I can assure you they were extremely disappointed and uh, as all players are when, when they're coming to the end of the road with, our, with one club. You mentioned with your Brad, sorry, with your, your finals campaign, you won't put any ceilings on this year, but is this a decision, I suppose, reflective that you don't see yourself perhaps contending next year? I think there's a lot of, um, conjecture as to how that's that's going to go but one thing I do know that, that in the short term if we if we continue to, to to play our senior players at the expense of our young players not only will we lose our senior players in a year or maybe two but we'll lose our young players too through lack of opportunity so um, now all those things were taken into account. You've right said a few yes. times that they could play on next year if they're here do you get the feeling that they could potentially play on somewhere else? Yeah that, that's certainly a, a question um, for them, and it's it's. I want to make it clear: it's not my role to retire players. I mean, that the boys involved make their individual decisions based around that. Um, you know, if they if they choose to seek opportunity elsewhere, I'll, I'll fully support them in, in that endeavour. Um, and again, while they're disappointed, they do understand where the football club's coming from. If they, they, if they decide not to contract at the end of this season, but obviously isn't part of this announcement, does that mean that he will be here next year? No, the, the discussions are ongoing as to the rest of, of our list um, build and the makeup of our list. Um, but um, you know, the boys again, look, potentially the last game in Melbourne this week meant that it, it accelerated this decision. But also, all four of the boys that I've been talking to made it very clear to me that that they wanted a decision made. Um, they 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 didn't want the the uncertainty and they wanted an answer and and so that played a part in accelerating the decision. But the rest of the list build is ongoing. If they decide uh, not to move on to another club, is there a position for any of them, uh, for any of them, especially Brent Harvey, to be involved in the club down the track? Oh, that, that goes without saying. Um, all, all of the boys um, will, will play significant roles in the football club's future, um, both you know, on field from mentoring and, and potentially coaching uh, the players and, and off field in ambassadorial roles. Um, but you know, again, that's that's if they're really keen to be involved. But from the football club's perspective, you know, they've, the legacy they've left will be indelible and it'll be enduring. When was the rest of the group told, Brad, and how did they take the news? Uh, only told half an hour ago. So uh, understandably, there's there's a lot of um, of emotion. There's a lot of, of disappointment, um, and to be honest, a little bit of, of surprise due to the the timing 
uh, of the announcement. But as hopefully I've clearly explained, you know, I was determined not to have the boys potentially walking off the ground in Melbourne for the last time without them giving the opportunity to their loved ones to see them and without the club giving the opportunity to the fans to was, see them. Was there any ever second guessing over the decision given how momentous it is or was it once it was made it was this is it and we've got to stick to it? Yeah certainly once the decision was made it was made but the lead up to that has been um, horrific. It's been, it's been horrific and it's been um, there's been a roller coaster of emotions and it's been ongoing over you know uh, probably a three-year period really. You know Michael Ferrito's case he spoke to the boys before and said this is this has been his lot for three years running now in terms of his future. So um, it's a terrible time of year for, um, for people who've got to make these calls. Um, and as the players have said, and as I've said on a number of occasion, occasions, the club comes first. Is there any part of you, when you saw Boomer, three goals, 30 possessions against him, perhaps the best team in the league on the weekend, think mm. maybe he needs one more year? Yeah, again, it's not if it was solely about Boomer's ability to play on next year and the world stopped after 2017, he would play on. Because we all know that, he, that he'd have um, significant impact. Um, but the opportunity cost to the football club is far too great um, to go forward. So the easy decision would have been just to let it roll on. But you know, we need to make um, decisions that are going to set this club up. So the people who make these decisions, was it unanimous? Uh, you all agreed with one another to make these decisions? Yeah, look, after, after significant debate, pros and cons, um, all the factors thrown into the mix, yeah, the decision is unanimous. But, uh, you know, the, the decision um, is made as a club, um, but I understand the responsibility lies with me. Did you any tell the board play? indicated, you know, either now or throughout the year that they are likely to, to look at another club if they were to leave here? Uh, I'm not going to speculate on that. The only thing I'm going to say is that, that I'm not retiring them. They, they make their decisions about their, their future. Um, so that's a question for them in due course. And we, we've, um, we've given the boys the opportunity um, to speak today. Um, but as I'm sure you can all understand, it's, it's quite raw, it's quite emotional, and they don't feel they're ready. And they also feel it's going to take their focus away from where they want it to be, um, hopefully over the next five weeks. So they'll speak um, themselves in due course, and you'll get an opportunity to ask them their, those questions. It is a unique situation in that it's the last game of the season, potentially their last in Melbourne, but not their last ever game. So do you have anything planned for the game? Not, not yet. I mean, obviously we will. But um, uh, there's, you know, we've had to get through this process first, so um, there'll be some, certainly some things involved. Um, you know, we, we expect to, to put in an enormous request for tickets um, because of the people that have that have helped these four boys along their journey and that have been heavily involved. So, yeah, there'll be something involved, but, but I'm not intimately across that at this stage. Were you worried doing it now could splinter the group? Oh, I think there's always a risk with these things, but the, the bigger risk was, was having them walk off the ground in Melbourne and not knowing their futures. Um, you know, that, and that would be disastrous. And while it's harder doing it this way, no doubt, and I understand criticism is going to come, I accept that, and I accept full responsibility. Um, but it's the right thing to do. Did you deliver the news, Brad, personally to each player? Yes. Is there anything in the coach's rule book on how to handle these sorts of situations? Or is it just you, the way you handle it? No, it's a, it's a relationship that's been built up over a long period of time with, with all four boys. Um, and, you know, the, we, we talk all the time where, where I've got enormous admiration for all, all four of them. Um, and I, I empathise with them, I really do because it, it does seem incongruous that you've got guys who are playing really good footy and, and they're being told that their footballing future, certainly at this club, is finished. So it doesn't, initially that, that doesn't make any sense and I understand to all the people out there that doesn't make any sense. Um, but we do, as I've said repeatedly, we do need to, to look to the future and it's not just two, 2017, it's 218 and beyond. In many ways it's not an employer-employee situation. You'd be mm. friends with these guys, yeah. so it must be so hard. <coughs> hard for you. It, it is. It's, it's heartbreaking. It really. It, there's no other word to describe it. Um, and you know, we've built such a tight relationship, and I've relied on them. The football clubs relied on them. They've been um, rocks of this place, um, and I completely empathise with them. Um, but at the end of the day. I've been honest with them and I've given them my view and um, I've given them my view and the plan for the football club into the future and while they understand that personally it's 
extremely disappointing. And I keep coming back to the example with Boomer. In 2009 at 31, we needed him to play on. If we'd been in a really um, poor situation in 2009 in terms of age of our list, now Boomer may have retired then or moved to another club. So circumstance plays a huge role in this, not just individual performance. Either positively or negatively, will this be a defining moment in your coaching career at North Melbourne? It could be. I mean, the, the, the future and, and others will decide that. Um, I'm not certainly going to speculate on it. Um, what I'm charged to do is, is um, do the right thing by this club, both in the short, medium, long term. And we're looking at all those factors all the time. Um, and quite simply, this is, while it's heartbreaking, um, I firmly believe it's the right thing for us to do. Who do you expect to step up at, in, within the leadership group and take on some of that role as being the mature, older statesman, really? Yeah, there'll, there'll be opportunities for, for a whole lot of guys to step up and, and fill the void, although they're never going to be able to fill the void in the short term that, that these four boys leave. Um, but when, uh, when others move on, others grow, and you know, we've got to create that opportunity and, and potentially we haven't been able to create that opportunity due to the great performance of our veterans. Um, yeah. So the, the veterans perform really well, they play. Um, and the fantastic thing about that is it's helped the team performance, but the, the downside is that we've denied others opportunity. Where does Boomer sit in the all time with North Melbourne? Well, I think Boomer himself would acknowledge Wayne Carey as the greatest player to ever play uh, for this football club, but I can't think of anyone else who, who rivals Boomer uh, for that next position. Um, but in terms of, so everyone can, can talk about his performance as a player and you know, speak in glowing terms. Uh, but what I, I'd rather focus on personally is the legacy he's going to leave. And his legacy will be unrivaled. There's no person, um, whether it be a player, coach, administrator, who will leave a better legacy for North Melbourne Football Club than Brent Harvey, um, bar none. And we've worked really hard to protect um, that legacy. and. You know, put a moat around that legacy and, and make it an enduring one. And you know, players who, and players, people who are associated with this club um, will be affected by the legacy that Boomer's left for them. Do you use this as, I guess, a pointed um, you know, message to the players to make sure you send these blokes off in style as far as you? I think it goes without saying. I think that um, you know, the, the four boys involved have spoken to the players about um, their desire to do that and their desire to, to perform really well and they're imploring the, the other 18 players that run out with them um, to squeeze every ounce, every last ounce of effort out of their, their bodies to, to send them off in the right way. Um, and I know how professional the four boys are, so I know what I'm going to get from them and hopefully we get a lift from the other 18. Last question. And just expecting anyone back, Brad, there's been speculation of obviously Sean Higgins, Luke McDonald, are expecting them to play this weekend? Uh, they're, they're the two um, most likely, depending on how they train today. Uh, Scott Thompson won't play this week. Um, uh, Sam Wright and Ben Jacobs won't play this week either. Um, hopefully there's still a chance to come back. Uh, Wadey, uh, we're training up and aiming um, to get him cherry right for an assault on the finals, um, but he won't play this week either.